The commission recognizes Don Crawford with a special invitation to the commissioners. Hold on now, okay. Yes, I want to, real quick, just want to give you all a personal invite to our, to our this will be our sixth annual Tennessee National Archery in the School Program Tournament this year. It's going to be April the 3rd. We're going to start at 8.30 in the morning. It's going to be at the Miller Coliseum in Murfreesboro. It's on West Thompson Lane is where it is. Uh, this year we've got 56 schools registered. We've got 1,226 kids that's going to be there. So we've got them all the way from... Uh, we have got them all the way from Memphis all the way to Carter County. That's going to be that's going to be there. I just want to call y'all out and invite y'all to come out and you know watch and see what this program is about. Thank y'all. What's the date, John? April third. That'll be the big day. We set up on the second. We got a couple flights that day, but April third is the big day. It's a Tuesday. Ah. That's when it is. Tuesday. Yes, sir. Thank you, Don. I know how successful this program is um, across the country, but very much so in Tennessee. So appreciate your your Thank guidance you. in that. All right, Commissioner Griggs, will you reread the motion the Wildlife Committee passed yesterday pertaining to wild hog, hog hunting on Catoosa WMA, please? I'll be glad to. Sorry. This, for the record, we're going back to the Wildlife Committee at this time to address the motion that was passed in committee yesterday. Commissioner Griggs. Thank you, Chairman, Madam Chairman. This is what uh, the motion was yesterday that was read. In consideration of staff's presentation at our upcoming April meeting, which will be addressing various wildlife and hunting season issues, as well as updates associated with the control of wild hogs in Tennessee, motion is made to direct staff to include the following specific items. Number one, readdress the current limit of non-family designees as related to wild hog control efforts on large acreage tracks. And two, in state no less than a 10-day period whereby the state will partner with the public in its wild hog control efforts on the Contusa WMA and other WMAs as deemed appropriate. This period will allow for the issue of dogs by the public and their assistance to the agencies. And I might add three notes to this. A, providing the opportunity to additional designees is reasonable given the varying track sizes that hogs occupy within the state. B, the involvement of seeking public assistance in the control of wild hogs at Contusa is consistent with the agency's goals and objectives. And finally, C, it is appropriate for the staff to recommend how this period is implemented, including the 10 days not necessarily being consecutive in consideration to the WMA's other activities and seasons. That's it, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Griggs. <laughs> Chairman Brown, the Wildlife Committee passed and recommends we pass this motion. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The motion unanimously <clears throat> carries. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Brown. That is all from me today. All right, at, at this time we will go to Government Relations <coughs> Communi and Communications Committee, Chairman Griggs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the commission at this time would like to ask Nat Johnson, the assistant director, to come up and give us a legislative update. Nat. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, we're getting down to the, the last days of the legislative session. Uh, Things really begin to move quickly. Uh, just kind of an over from an overview standpoint, next week there are 22 bills up that concern us. Nine of those deal with wild hog management. So that's kind of from the overview standpoint. Uh, on the Senate side, the Senate Energy and Environment Committee is going to hold its last meeting on Wednesday. Uh, in the past, once that committee is closed, it has not reopened. There's some issues that uh, once they set uh, down that they don't want to reopen. So. Given that the bill has to pass both houses, if it if it hasn't passed on the Senate side by next Wednesday, probably not going to go anywhere. And a lot of times in the House, we'll just dispose of those bills. Uh, in, in that committee, there are there are several hog bills, uh, several of them dealing specifically with with the Cumberland Plateau and with the private land issues. Uh, there's also the uh, 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 transport bill. That will come that will be in the, in that that Senate committee, and uh, 
there is the, the bill that, that seems to be moving forward now on the, on the OHV issue. Uh, I see it having no impact on our operation of OHVs, of our OHV area at Royal Blue. Uh, as it, it's amended right now, it will leave all the funding that, is, that, that comes into the state for, for motorized trail operation with the agency, our MOU with TDEC, where we give back to them excess funds for grant programs for other OH riding, OHV riding areas will stay in place. It's just the, the programmatic aspects of, of trying to expand that program and implement that program will then go back to TDEC if that bill uh, does finally pass. But uh, as far as the funding for the uh, agency's riding area, that's, I think that's pretty set that that will be maintained in the bill. Uh, there is the issue in the Senate side also of uh, of, of the uh, earmarking uh, license fees that come in for uh, operation of trout facilities. I think we're working toward a, a, a resolution of that area, of that situation in both the House and the Senate. I mean, we've, we've clearly pointed out that we spend more money on trout production that comes in from simply from the uh, uh, revenue from those uh, trout stamps that are out there and uh, trying to move away from the earmarking of funds and putting those into the separate funds. And I think this really points out a real good example that if it do, did come down to a situation where we did have to uh, move forward in, in a quick pace with billing a hatchery, that if all we had available to us were those funds that came in from the trout stamp, it'd be a long time before we'd be able to accomplish that because we wouldn't have been able to pull any funds from, from other areas to be able to accomplish that. I think everybody's beginning to see that pretty well. Uh, on, on the House side, uh, the Full Conservation Environment Committee and, uh, will meet. The, uh, the uh, commission uh, uh, sunrise bill will be up in there. I should say that the commission sunrise bill came out of the Senate as heading to the floor. I imagine it will be on the floor at the end of next week. Uh, it will be also be heard in the House Full Committee next week. I'm not sure whether they're going to hear it uh, next Wednesday or not. Uh, there is some thought of, of pairing that up with another bill that's moving forward by Chairman Cobb. But uh, that bill it is up next week. Uh, the uh, transport bill will be, will be up next week in that full committee, uh, as well as <clears throat> Representative Wendell's bill on the, on the hogs in Overton County. Um, the, I, I did speak uh, to the chairman of the full committee yesterday, and uh, he said if, if some members of the commission and Chairman Brown, if, if you could, would uh, be available next Wednesday to uh, come make some further comments on the action the commission is taking this week to the committee, he would uh, be very appreciative if, uh, if that could take place. Uh, the subcommittee calendar uh, in the House has got several bills on it. I think what's going to happen next week, there is a, a this is the energy, I mean, the Environment and Conservation Committee. Uh, there is a, a bill concerning a, a landfill in West Tennessee that I think will take a tremendous amount of discussion, really doesn't have anything with us. And I think what the, uh, what the committee is going to do next week is spend most of the time on that bill, on the discussion of that bill that deals with a, with a landfill in West Tennessee. Uh, there may be one other bill that, 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 that passes out of there, uh, but that's, I think, we'll put the majority of the time next week will be spent on the subcommittee. It's just, it's just a little bit of a process to get, to, to get the rest of the things moving out of there. Um, there, there there's a, a pretty much of a caption bill that's out there that's going to deal with a, uh, an, uh, an issue of the state acquiring a, a piece of property and in uh, uh, it's Washington County, it's called Doe Mountain. Uh, we used to manage Doe Mountain. Uh, it was taken over by private ownership, but I think the state is going to repurchase, it's going to purchase Doe Mountain, and there's going to more than likely be a group formed that will uh, look into the management of Doe Mountain, of which will be a part of that. We will not be, uh, we do not think at this time we'll be the, the managing agency of it, but I'm asked to be on a group that's going to uh, oversee the management of that area. And there'll be a, 
more than likely there'll be an organization formed next week to do that. But uh, that's just kind of a short overview of, of, of what we've got going on next week. The majority of the committees have, have decided, have, have set out that next week will be their last calendar in the House. And that doesn't mean it's their last meeting. That'll be the last day you can put a bill on calendar. It may take another two or three weeks to, to get those bills worked out on that calendar. But we're coming down to exactly what we're going to have to work with and uh, those issues. But I, uh, I think from an overview standpoint, that, that's where we are. I think we'll we probably have a lot more uh, definitive answers by next week, I hope. So you want them on the commission to have a question for Nat? You want in the audience? Thank you, Nat. Thank you. All right, we will proceed to uh, budget non-game and endangered species committee, Chairman Parks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Barry Sumters. Thank you, commissioners. This is a uh, request for a budget expansion. Uh, as discussed yesterday, this is a non-game project in East Tennessee using some uh, some federal funds that we had left over from a uh, from a previous project anybody have any questions comments <coughs> mr chairman the committee voted and i recommend approval of the budget expansion as presented all right do i hear a second I have a motion and a second all in favor say aye Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, is requesting a, a budget expansion of two hundred seventy-five thousand uh, dollars to purchase uh, in 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 cooperation with uh, partners uh, a sixty-eight acre tract uh, that adjoins the Hiawassee Refuge. Um, uh, we're seeking approval to do that. Any questions? Mr. Chairman, uh, the committee voted and I recommend approval of the budget expansion as presented. All right, do we have a second? <coughs> have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you, John. Thank you, sir. Darren Ryder. Uh, yesterday, uh, Darren Ryder presented uh, improvements in Norris Dam in the amount of $357,050. It's all federal money, and we love that. So I don't think we need any further discussion on that. Uh, are there any questions? Chairman Brown, the Budget Committee voted, and I recommend approval of the budget expansion. Do I have a second? Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. John Gregory. Thank you, Chairman Parks. Uh, yesterday, I presented a uh, budget expansion of $20,000 to do some uh, hemlock willy adelgid uh, treatment work. Uh, I do need to make a correction. If y'all noticed when I was talking about acres, I paused for a minute, and, and when I went back and checked, I had misspoke. We have a little over 5,000 acres of hemlock, and we're looking to treat somewhere around 1,000 instead of having 50,000. I knew that didn't sound right, but I had to go back and check my notes and wanted to make that correction. But we request that the uh, budget be expanded so we can start uh, some more treatments. Are there any questions? Chairman Brown, the budget committee voted and I recommend approval of the budget expansion as presented. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Uh, Opposed, no. Motion carries. 
Thank you. Uh, I also uh, request an expansion to expand our Morristown Hatchery uh, land base to, to build some more uh, ponds to, to grow out the fish. It's 15 acres, uh, and we request an expansion of $95,000. Any questions? <clears throat> Chairman Brown, the Budget Committee voted, and I recommend approval of this budget expansion as presented. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Second. All right. Is there uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, my final request uh, for some additional money. Uh, <clears throat> we have three uh, vehicles uh, used in Region 4 uh, that were purchased with federal dollars and no uh, uh, depreciation or replacement money was paid during our use of that vehicle. So they are very old and needing replacing and we need to repurchase those vehicles. So we're requesting to expand the budget by $67,000 to, to replace those three vehicles. Anybody have any questions on that matter? <laughs> Chairman, I uh, committed voted and I recommend approval of this budget expansion. All right, do we have a second? Second. Okay, uh, have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion Thanks, carried. John. Thank you. You're on a roll, John. Yeah. <laughs> this next budget expansion concerns a grant, a $25,000 one-time grant to the council to advance the hunting and shooting sports uh, it is all federal money, $25,000 grant, one time, and it's all federal money. Any questions? Mr. Chairman, the Budget Committee voted, and I recommend approval of the budget expansion presented. Right. Right. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In your, uh, <clears throat> in your book, there should be a two-page financial statement. Uh, I'm reporting through the month of January, and at the top, as you can see, the boating fund is approximately 10% below where it was this point in time last year. I'll attempt to try to explain that. It's not quite 10%. It's actually about 7 and a half. And the reason is the source or the, the way that the funds are received from our license agents, they're swept. I'll try not to bore you to tears. They are <clears throat> swept um, by the bank and are then posted with the Treasury in the wildlife fund. In order to get the boat registrations, uh, in the boating fund, which as you recall, they are separated, boating and wildlife fund, we have to do a journal entry. And that is done very timely. And usually, Finance Administration Department of Accounts will pick that up in the period that it is submitted. Occasionally, it does not happen. And when that does not happen, those funds are not transferred in, the, in that particular month. So for January, there's about $66,000 that's still in wildlife. It's not a big deal. It corrects itself at the end of the year, although it becomes more of a challenge for us because, especially for me, because I'm based on consistency. I like to see what we're doing now versus what we were doing at the same point in time last year. So instead of being 10% down, we're actually about 7.5% down. Uh, I still don't think that's a, a, a significant amount at this point in time in January. In like manner, if you look at the wildlife fund, uh, I'm reporting on 1.5% ahead. That actually ought to be 1.3% if you adjust it. Now, <clears throat> with your permission, I would like to continue reporting as I, had, as I have in the past and give you the figures that finance administration has. It becomes more of a challenge for me then to adjust and adjust back at the end of the month. Be glad to do whatever you want to. But I thought I would mention that since that 10% did look awfully high. Um, any questions on that, I'd be glad to answer it. Uh, as we go forward on the expense side of the boating fund, 
where uh, at approximately 33 percent of the allotment on the expenses, and as I mentioned a, a second ago on the wildlife fund, we're approximately um, 1.3, 1.8 percent ahead of where we were at the same point in time in, in January of the prior year. On the expenditures for the uh, wildlife fund, we're at approximately 48 percent of the allotment. At the bottom of the page, the Watchable Wildlife Endowment, uh, we have uh, approximately $28,000 as a balance uh, that can be spent. That's the interest that can be transferred, <clears throat> excuse me, for the, to cover uh, expenses for the Watchable Wildlife uh, programs. And the Watchable, uh, the uh, Lifetime Endowment has approximately $31,125,000 in that particular fund. At the top of the next page, the second page, the Wetlands Acquisition Fund has approximately 5.4 million uh, balance as of the end of January. The maintenance uh, we zero out as we usually do, and the compensation, which is the in lieu of tax fund, has approximately 342,000. Uh, probably around the end of May, we will get a tax certification from the controller's office to pay the in lieu of tax amount, and there should be enough there to cover that. Sure. As to how we want this presented in the future. As I understand it, what you're presenting now matches what finance and administration has, and you'd like to continue to do that. Yes, sir. What, what I, I believe you'll see in, when I report on the month of February, that 66000 that was still in wildlife when it should have been in boating will have been corrected by then. Uh, <clears throat> This happens uh, historically in the last three years. It, it, uh, well, it happened a little more often uh, last year and then the year before that, uh, but a couple of times a year, two or three times a year. Uh, obviously willing to do whatever you'd like to, but I, I, I can certainly explain whatever the differences are. Uh, gets to be a little, perhaps a little confusing when you don't work with it every day. It even gets confusing for me when I do work with it every day. Uh, but anything you'd like to do, we'd be glad to do it. Like it is, and give us the explanation. Okay. Just like we did now. Be glad to. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Mr. Chairman. All right. That uh, concludes the agenda this morning. Is there any business to be taken up by anyone in the audience? Director Carter, do you have some comments to make? Yes, sir. If I could, is uh, Mr. Chairman, a couple of things. First of all, uh, in the month of March here on the, on the 22nd, which is a Thursday, the Music City chapter of Quail Forever is having their annual banquet. And, and uh, as you know, when Mr. Crabtree showed you the video earlier, that would be the same group. <clears throat> if you're interested in going, I'll be sending out to you an, an email uh, how to purchase tickets and, and the logistics and all that. We'll be here in Nashville at the Nashville Gun Club. So it'll be on the 22nd. Also, if you might remember, we, we've sent out a series of emails about adjusting the April meeting. The April meeting did not change. It will, it will, for the commission, will stay on the 12th and 13th of April, which is a Thursday and Friday. We did move the May meeting, or excuse me, we set the May meeting uh, because of a rule that, that we needed to bring before the commission, and that was the earliest date that we could do it. The dates that are set for the May meeting are the 17th and 18th of May, which is, again, a Thursday and Friday. And for your consideration, we might think about go ahead and setting a date for the June meeting. I believe that we will have to meet in June, but in the event that we don't, we can always cancel, of course. But I would suggest that, that we consider the 21st and 22nd of June, which is a Thursday, Friday, <clears throat> that puts us back on the pretty much the track that the schedule that the commission traditionally met on. I know in, in the in an effort to gain as much public input and to meet with as many people as you could. Uh, the, the dates really since about last November have changed from some of the traditional times so you can meet with different organizations in different places across the state. And, and that worked pretty well. I don't know of anything that's going to happen in June that would require that. So again, for your consideration, there's certainly no reason to stick with that if you'd like to change it to a different date. But if we could set the June meeting, that would be of help. 
Well, you stole my thunder. I had notes here to remind everybody about the meeting days. Disregard anything I said. <laughs> Does anybody have uh, any comments or questions about especially the June dates? Is that going to work? Okay. Sure. That, Yeah, the April date meeting date is uh, Thursday and Friday, 12th and 13th of April. May is Thursday and Friday, 17th and 18th. And then June is a Thursday, Friday, 21st and 22nd. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I... Those will be here in Nashville, those meetings. I, I want to apologize to the commission and the agency. I, I won't be able to make the May meeting. Uh, I'm taking my son on his first bear hunt to Canada, so, and he's been looking forward to this for several years. He just now got old enough to go, so uh, I'm going to respectfully bow out from the May meeting. So, I think that's a justifiable excuse, a re reason. I don't guess that's an excuse. That's a reason. Anything Ms. else? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I guess just to reiterate, the if our plan is to have the the preview of the season setting. Uh, process in at the April meeting and with that fraction for the Commission probably at the May meeting so be two pretty big meetings uh, back to back and just mention and one last little thing back to the Music City chapter well forever they came the other day by we were having our annual our monthly staff meeting and they uh, wondered about getting together for lunch and lo and behold not only did we get together but they fixed lunch and we all got together and and uh, had as many quails I've ever seen in one spot and we, we ate well, had a lot of fellowship, and just wanted to acknowledge the, that we appreciate what they did just to further the, the interaction between the agency and the Music City chapter. Commissioner Griggs, now we know. They stole the quail from those kids. <laughs> After that hunt, we, want, we wondered why they weren't eating quail instead of hot dogs. Now, boy. I may have to recant. I, I may have seen more quail in one other spot. That'd be... <laughs> Can I ask a question? Sure. Are, are you locked in on the June 20th or 21st? No, sir. Could we consider the week before? I'm not asking to change it for me. I, I have a board meeting at home with my job, but it's fine. I can work around that. It's call the commission. May is critical time with the rule making, right? Yes, sir. So if everybody is anybody that moving it up a week creates a problem? Okay, what are we talking about? 14th and 15th? I would ask if anybody in the staff, correct me if I'm wrong, we got anything that would tie us to those other dates? Sure. Everybody we okay? Change, we could always change it at the April meeting if something did, if they come up on it. So. Okay, so we're going to change, <laughs> at least at this time, the June meeting to the 14th and 15th. Thank Still a, a Thursday and a Friday. Thank you. That, that's not a problem. The only reason that we tend to go to the later month, it's the commission meets just prior that way to our staff meeting, so we can take up whatever the commission had almost immediately. And it gives us almost three weeks to get the things together to get to you so that you have more time to look over them before the commission meeting. So we, we prefer to go toward the end of the month when it's possible, but there's nothing tying us to those dates right now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have. Yes. Anything else? I, I wanted to comment that uh, uh, thank Commissioner Schuster for filling in for uh, Commissioner Welch, who's chairman of boating. But she's not here for this meeting. Her mother had surgery, so she was not able to attend this meeting. And uh, we certainly hope that, that she does well. The other thing was that this is the first public meeting that we've had as far as uh, well, I shouldn't say that right. The first meeting we've had by video that's available to the public. All of our meetings are public meetings, but hopefully this went well and more people will get to see uh, what goes on at the commission meetings. And if you have questions or comments, certainly those can be forwarded to the agency. We all right, Don? Yes, sir. It's a tape. What, one what, more. One uh, I told you about the Representative Borchard yesterday, former Representative Borchard. He, he apparently has uh, has been treated and is doing well. Uh, 
I don't know that he's back home yet or not, but, but in any case, uh, it's, it's not as severe as we were afraid of yesterday, so I just want to pass on some good news to you. Great. Great. Thank you. We certainly wish him well also. Okay, if there's nothing else, we'll be adjourned until April 12th at 1 o'clock.